he's Marler, and this is his music show. Hello again, everybody. Welcome to another craptastic episode of the Marlin Music Show. I am David. Um, doing a series now, I won't really call it a series. It's going to be a few, probably in a couple of weeks, I'm going to release here over a couple of weeks. Um, there are a lot of albums in September that have anniversaries they're celebrating this month. Um, a lot of those are by a particular band I'm going to talk about today, and that is KISS. Um, they have had several anniversaries in September of albums they've released. What I'm going to talk about today actually is four of those, but they were released on the same exact day, and that is the solo albums. Um, they celebrate their 45th anniversary this month. Um, they came out um, right after the Love Gun tour, um, in between that and Dynasty. At a time in the band where there was uh, quite a bit of turmoil, things had started going uh, south for them a little bit. And um, it was one of those situations where, you know, Peter had had the success with Beth and, you know, Ace was starting to get the big head. And, you know, they were just like, okay, well, let's just all do solo albums, put them on the same day, slap Kiss on them. Um, we'll make another fortune off of these things and everybody gets their rocks off making their own music so that's kind of what happened um, although <coughs> um, I think these albums kind of started the beginning of the end of the original four to be honest um, but having said that at the time it did what it was supposed to do and um, kind of got those got some of that out of their system a little bit and enable them to move forward for another couple of years on the original as the original four so anyway um i'm going to talk a little bit about each one of these i'm going to start with my least favorite and work up to my favorite um and so we'll start off my least favorite of the four by far not even close is the peter cross one um you know musically it can be debated about how good it is or not good it is, you know, and I realize that all of these albums were designed to showcase, I guess, each member's strength or each member's um, outside influences that they had and brought into the band, um, which I think they all had four pretty different outside influences and it shows on these albums, but it also, it, it kind of shows that these influences they had when mixed together in one big bowl, um, you got this uh, soup, so to speak, that was very good on their collective albums as a band. But Peter's is uh, real bluesy, real jazzy, almost kind of like, you know, smoky lounge room kind of music. Um, very few songs on here I care about. In fact, really, honestly, none. To be, uh, be, to, honestly, I, I just I don't like it. Um, Tossing and Turning, probably the most popular song on this album. It was one that um, was a remake from years ago. Um, there's another one called, I think, that's the kind of Sugar Papa Likes. It's all, you know, real jazzy. And it's just, you know, Peter was a swing big band kind of drummer, really. And he, he converted that into rock and roll playing very well. Um, but as far as a solo album, there was too much of that on here. And so as far as I'm concerned, we're just, we're knocking it out right away. Worst of them, not a song that I really care for. It's just bad. Okay. Um, going on to, if you rank them four to one, number three is Gene Simmons. Um, there are several songs on this album that were, I think, supposed to be on Destroyer, the Gene Water on Destroyer. And Bob Ezra said, no, they're just not going to cut the mustard. Um, I think Radioactive was one of those. That's probably the most popular song. It's one that they did in concert when they were representing these albums on the Dynasty Tour. It might be the best on here. Um, you know, When You Wish Upon a Star was just absolutely unnecessary. A song that just didn't, it's like, what are you doing, man? Um, See You Tonight is actually maybe the best song on there. Um, it's a song that it's it's kind of a 
lower ballad. It shows Gene's true singing voice, which I've always thought was very unique and pretty good. Um, and it's one that they had done on the Unplugged era um, with the conventions and everything um, that fit in pretty well. Um, past that, there's not a lot on here that's that's, that's really good. Um, it, it's 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 very kind of Beatlesque, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but it, it's something I don't think is Gene's strength. You know, his strength is and the the irony of 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 these four albums is all of them represent material that each member typically brought to the band um, on their albums. However, this one, not really um, with Gene. It's really kind of out of his range in terms of what he brought to the band. It was on the Kiss album prior to that. Um, you know, he did a remake of uh, See You in My Dreams, which was on Rock and Roll Over. Um, kind of a little bit of a stripped down version. Uh, the Rock and Roll Over version is a lot better. That's really the only song that really even kind of fits, maybe Radioactive. Um, kind of fit maybe the Love Gun style a little bit, but other than that, nothing on this album really fit into the Kiss mold, in my opinion. So that one is just above Peter's for me. And then moving on to the, my second favorite is Paul Stanley's. Um, Paul's it was a lot more Kiss sounding. Um, a lot of the songs on here were songs that you could picture or envision on Kiss albums. Uh, that they previously previously released, um, you know, tonight you belong to me is fantastic song. Move on, fantastic song. Um, both of those are songs that probably could have been on Kiss albums prior to this album, or maybe you know even on Dynasty or something like that. Um, very rock and roll songs, very much in his wheelhouse, very much in the wheelhouse of the band as a whole. Um, and I feel like that it's one of those situations where he literally could have played this with the other members of the band. On, on the, he could have recorded this with the other members of the band and it would have sounded pretty much the same. I felt like it was very, very Kiss-like. Um, so for me, it's, it's, it's my second favorite at number two. And so that leaves only one, and that is Ace Freely's. And Ace is, is above and beyond the best of any of the rest of them, not even close. Um, you, you look at Ace as a guitar player, <clears throat> I've always thought he was very solid. Nothing too extraordinary, not great, more of a cool factor than anything else, but his songwriting was always good. Pretty much every song that he put on a Kiss album was very, very good, possibly one of the best, if not the best, on the album. You know, Shock Me was fantastic. 2000 Man, even though it was a remake on Dynasty, that was a very, very good song. Um, so, yeah, he, he, and so this album has just so many great songs. Rip It Out's fantastic song. New York Groove, even though it was a remake, was a really, really good song. Snowblind, Fractured Mirror, that instrumental, very good. And if you look at these four, um, solo albums and you, you fast forward several years and over time all four put out at least one more solo album um, in, in later years um, and you know Peter's never got much traction Gene's was kind of okay Paul's Live to Win was probably the best one of the best it was definitely better than, than Gene's or Peter's but Ace you know had a solo career that was pretty popular. He was pretty good, you know, with Freely's Comet. He's done a few things in the past 10 or so years that have been very good, and he's had the most, the best solo career of all of them. Now, Gene and Paul never really have been about the solo thing. Um, that's, that's always pretty much been about Kiss. Um, but definitely of Ace and Peter, it's not even close. Ace was by far the best solo artist of all these, and it showed it was foreboding on these four solo records. Um, but yeah, Aces was, it was the most Kiss-like. You could hear more of their sound. Um, he had good musicians on it. He had Anton Fig, who played with him even later in Freely's Comet. He was also, Anton was also a drummer for David Letterman's band uh, for years and years and years. And Ace just really knocked it out of the park with the solo album. 
um, in, in terms of the rock and roll factor and I think the sound that the KISS fans wanted to hear out of all these, you know, or hoping to hear from all these. He, he certainly nailed it. So anyway, very uh, short, quick video here. Just wanted to give you my take on these four solo albums. Um, the, these are albums that, you know, have been scrutinized over the years amongst KISS fans and dissected and talked about or whatever and um, about and, and this is typically the order I'm giving is typically what most people think about these albums um, that Aces is the best, Peters is the worst and you know Gene and Paul are in the middle and I think that that's that's pretty much the, the way that they they stand for most people definitely it is for me um, I've heard these many times and, and the one I always gravitate to when I'm in the mood to listen to any of them is, is, is Aces so it's very, very, very well done, more above and beyond the rest for sure. So anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. Um, I always like to hear from you to, to get your opinions. Uh, let me know what you think about my order. Let me go. Let me know what you think about uh, what your order is for these, how you think they rank from one to four, what your favorite is, and why. And as you're commenting, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. All right, guys. So I will see you with another episode soon. And until I do, I'm just going to sign off like I always do and say, be good to each other, be good to yourself, and life will be good to you. Peace.